Hi, it's Gadget UK here again. Um, just looking at this uh, AES again for beeps. So, uh, start by looking at the SCART cable here. Um, obviously, it's having some uh, video and sound issues. The sound, I believe, is to do with this, you know, the way this is wired. Looks like it's wired for stereo. Um, and the uh, MVS, uh, sorry, the AES, um, doesn't output stereo from the, uh, the back there on this connector, as far as I understand. Um, I need to check that. We might be able to do some mod to use the unused pin 7, I think it is. Um, but, uh, yeah, the first thing I thought I'd do, like I say, is just check the, and I've been in this before, but I didn't uh, take the, uh, the, the the shield and stuff off this properly. But as you can see, the red wire there is just floating around. So that's one thing, um, and the solder on those uh, in a few places and the strands of wire meant that one or two of them were touching. So I'm not sure if that's got anything to do with it, probably, probably has, uh, hopefully. Um, but obviously just taking uh, that apart again, so uh, mm, ooh, look at some of the sizes of the blobs of solder on there. Um, so I need to check this uh, versus the uh, wiring diagram uh, there for the uh, AS. Just make sure all the grounds are in the right places, uh, the colours in the right places, and we've got the sink and stuff going to the right place. Um, uh, so yeah, I'll do that now. Right, so I'll just quickly show you what's wrong with this uh, cable. Uh, I've done a couple of mods to this. Uh, sorry, I've got a bit of tape stuck inside there. You'll see that uh, the purple wire there. Just put a bit of tape around it. It was going to one of the audio channels. I forget where the wire is now. Uh, d -d 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 it's uh, yeah, it's one of these. This where the green jumper wire goes there. The AES outputs mono uh, through the back, so you know uh, you're not getting anything. I think it's probably connected to nothing. That pin you're just getting noise picked up on it. So it's better to just have a jumper linker to the other channel. So you've got one channel coming in where that black wire is, and the green one just links it to the other channel to make it sound stereo it is mono, the, the channels are all mixed on the output there. Um, you still get stereo out the, um, you know, the three and a half uh, mil headphone socket. And the other thing you can see I've done here, and these wires, you know, the solder in there, this is not my soldering really, a lot of the solders like that, if you look at it, there's some giant blobs and things on there. I'm not even going to touch them, they're okay, they're mostly on the earth points and things, uh, or the ground I should say. Um, and uh, you'll see, I've got a little resistor there, um, 150 ohms, just between pin 8 and pin 16. Um, and pin, I think, I can't remember this, is pin 8? Uh, it might be 16, you've got the 5 volt coming into one of those pins there, I forget which, 2, 4, so. yeah it's probably pin 8 and then it goes via a resistor to pin 16 and that switches it into RGB mode um, and then the final thing I've done, which I always do on these, is just put a little, um, it's like a, a bead effectively, um, you know, a, it's got a little, uh, if I write bead I guess, it just on the ground, on the ground line, um, just helps filter out noise because you've got different grounds from different systems and things, and it's just always good practice really, um, and it does make a difference um, as you'll see in a sec, if I just put this back together, uh, I'll show you the end result of uh, how that's affected the sound and picture. There we go, so as you can see I've upgraded the uh, free unit by house there to the latest free one which is 3.1, uh, there's a bit of trouble actually doing that, I had to um, erase the chip three or four times and keep trying to let it cool down, you know, I gave it a good blast, the final fourth chance I gave it a good blast for the UV for 25 minutes, um, then let it cool down for 10 minutes, then put it in the programmer and it programmed okay. The previous uh, three attempts I did a blank check, it was always blank but it failed at, you know, it's a random percentage each time so very unusual. Could be my program, but I tried it on a couple of different programs and they were all having problems. So um, I hope this chip's okay. You know, it could be a glitchy ROM chip he's got on this, but I had to verify it several times and it's okay. And as you can see, it's working. But look at the difference in the picture the quality there. At the start of the game, there, you'll notice straight away the red is not shimmering at all, it's just like crystal clear. Um, and there's no hissing or buzzing for turn to sound up. No noise there at all, it's uh, crystal clear. If you keep your eye on the red uh, bar at the top. Just do a bit of a touch on it. Yeah, just watch the red bars on the yellow stuff, but just watch the red red. So you get the sort of transparent thing, but it's not, there's no scroll on the red. Um, it's really clear, this is as good as my NBS uh, direct RGB output. Uh, pretty impressive it to be honest, it's uh, leaps and bounds above uh, what it was. I, 
I suspect that red, uh, you know, that the fixes I've done is not actually fixed the problem with the red. I think the it's the composite, the composite output from that CXA 11.5p chip. I think it's probably a pretty shit composite output. That's what I think it is. Um, and with this TV, you might find on a different TV you don't get the little red bars scrolling. But, um, I don't want to investigate that further, I don't think at this stage, because if, if there is a problem with composite, it's going to be internal to that CXA chip, so I mean, if it wants to use composite, I'd suggest just replacing that chip at some point in the future. But uh, when cables uh, configured now, this is you know, smart, using RGB definitely, this is going to be clear. Um, I wouldn't, I see, can't see a reason why anyone wants to use the composite, really, it's a bit pointless. Um, and like I say, I think composite might be alright on certain TVs, I think it's just this TV. Um, doesn't like that composite signal from the, uh, well, that's how that shit here code. But as you can see, you know, in here, it's uh, fantastic. Uh, so the next thing I'm going to do in the next video is uh, the ROM fix. Uh, and then I think the final thing uh, over the uh, regulator, I might not show that. All I'm going to do with the regulator is uh, I've ordered a brand new uh, regulator and I'm just going to swap it out so that the uh, screw Mount. I'll just show you actually, you've seen it on the previous video if you've uh, been watching, but uh, I'll switch it off. Where the uh, yeah the heat sink, you know, because it, it, it uses the board as a heat sink, that screw mount in there, obviously it's not in the right place, it's just clipping it down to the board there, it's not right. And this does get warm, I can feel now it's pretty warm. So uh, I'll, you know, obviously unscrew it, take the thing off, put a brand new one on um, with the legs, obviously, you know, nice new legs that'll reach the distance there, um, put a bit of thermal uh, heat sink. Uh, Compound just a tiny, 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 tiny bit under the, the base of the thing, so that it, it is, you know, you get thermal um, bond in there a bit better with the board and stuff, and uh, just resolder it. Um, and I've got, I use my hot air, um, I've got a hot air rework uh, station. I think I'll just use that, put it onto a low temperature setting, and just reheat this glue here, um, just at a low setting to melt it. Um, I don't think there's anything else really needs to do into this. Then um, I might just resolder. The, uh, this LED as well because it's looking a bit flaky. It should be upright, not out the way like that. Um, not that you can see it. Um, but uh, yeah, and then the final thing is to try and think of you know some solution to the um, switch. Um, someone uh, on the last video kindly, I think it was Fire Shark or something it was called, something along those lines. Uh, you'll see he's put a comment there to use a Mega Drive uh, power switch. I've not got one spare because all my systems are you know are working. I want to keep them as they are really. Um, so I don't know whether anyone out there has got a spare power um, switch or something, I don't know. Uh, maybe Beeps could do that himself. I, I might have a go, like, as I said right at the start with this, with using a bit of acrylic, see if I can produce something for that. But um, yeah, so the only remaining things like I say is there really is the ROM and that regulator really. Um, the ROM, I'm not, so, I'm not as worried about this um, earlier in the week as, uh, you know, as, or not as early, worried about this now as I was earlier in the week. The reason being is because I fixed the other AES uh, at lunch today and uh, my other AAS had a, a similar horror story going on. We didn't have all these wires and things everywhere, but there was an awful lot of damage, probably the same sort of level of damage, really. Um, and it wasn't that difficult, really. It's just a case of removing all the stuff and looking at where all the traces go, making some notes, draw yourself a little diagram um, of where you know where pa pads are missing. Make sure you put a little circle or something on the pin to show that pads are missing. And it's important you do that, because then when you start soldering on the other side, you're not going to get solder flowing all the way through, and that'll give you... Uh, insight into where to start sticking jumper wires if um, you know even though the wires you, you can see what I'm trying to say sometimes the pad if one pads damaged you won't get solder flowing all the way through the board so whilst the tracks look okay you might think that doesn't that that particular track doesn't need um, bridging or you know doesn't need a jumper wire to fix it but you might find that when you solder from the other side the solder won't flow through so actually that tracks not going to make a connection and this is probably part and parcel of why someone's fixed it this particular way because um, you know everything's exposed it's easy to see what's going on uh, God, look at the state of that. Isn't it just, something just stuck up there, you know, there's lots of bits stuck up. These three red orange wires here, this whole thing, it's like a bit of a socket still on there. Don't know, it's, why would someone do that? I don't know, it's beyond me. Um, and then I should be able to, you know, use some shorter wires, because some of these wires are ridiculous lengths as well. Um, and, you know, gluing, putting glue on there, it's always a good idea, but not on the chip like that, not on solder points, because that's just a nightmare to get off sometimes. I'll probably be okay, I'll do it carefully. Um, but it's just not the right place to do it, you know. The best place to do it would have been to just pull these wires over here a little bit and stick a little bit of blue, uh, blob of uh, glue just on, on the, you know, the point here, not not on top of the chip, not on the, you know, the solder points and things there. Um, anyway, thanks for watching, I'll see you soon.